biggest uh, you know deal breaker even after the app you round is actually not being available to job Hi guys and welcome to another video by Mentimi Careers my name is Alan Arvindan and today we will be covering on the morning star interview questions specifically related to the position of uh, MDP which is stands for basically management development program what we will be doing here will be talking on the three areas of the MDP preparation first i'll be taking you through morning star its roles uh, and responsibilities in the MDP program i will be taking you through some practice questions which i feel basis on the preparation that we do for our students uh, for such positions on what could be the probable areas of testing and i will give you some sample questions which you will practice and finally we will be covering on deal breaker right because you think that or people usually think that it's only the interview performance or the technical aspects which usually decides the fate of an interview but there is more to it rather than just the technical aspect of it right because Uh, in companies at this level which are uh, you know which usually hire at a larger scale uh, there are tends that tends to be much more than uh, just the technical aspect right now let's first look at uh, the morning star structure right now why am i covering this because when you go for an interview and specifically for the mdp program uh, which is also called as the management development program is because basis your performance in the management development program it will be decided which of these departments you will get in right now some of these departments obviously might be higher some of them might be lower some of them might be in the middle right so you don't really have to worry about at that stage because the mdp program does not directly put you into a specific field right so let's get started with first understanding the mdp research associate role right now you can clearly see i don't really have to read it out the eligibility has been mentioned the good part about uh, the mdp research associate program is that it does not give you any bias towards whichever qualification background you are coming from which is something that morning star has been doing for a lot of time right so they don't really care which educational qualification you have done because it really doesn't decide the fate of your performance in the program right now it also gives you the fact that even if you are in the last semester of your graduation even then you can apply for this program right now uh this might be a little more over simplification of the role but we will just go through what are the responsibilities which are written here right so you can see here conduct timely and in depth screening research right review of company data and disclosures so that's pretty straight forward right? so basically you are expected to do research on the various data points which are required in the research process right the learn the research methodology in process we're talking about the mdp program we're not really talking about the role which eventually you get assigned to right so uh, and that means also that there will be a training process involved right deliver on targets which is pretty uh, obvious right and uh, achieve the set smart goals that's also fine and so you can see here not much right there is not much technical things here there is non technical expectation right and that's pretty obvious because this is an mdp program right so the role and responsibility get assigned once your mdp program is finished right so at this stage they're just talking about very qualitative perspective majorly on the or attitude perspective what is expected of you right but that doesn't mean that we will not there is no questions or there are no uh, you know skills which you need right so i think this part as like a, a holy grail now that nobody can really uh, make a good career in any field unless their basic communication is in place now you don't really when i say english communication it really doesn't mean uh, just writing and speaking but it also means communicating and and getting your things done that, that is way beyond just english communication right uh, so ms office particularly excellent word because this is the maximum place any organization specifically in finance anybody will be working on right now so here say here you can clearly see it just says knowledge it doesn't really say that you have to be an expert in any of these and plus it clearly mentioned that it's a plus so that doesn't mean that this is like a deal breaker out here right so if you really want to do something my recommendation would be to take up a python course 
not too much. You can even learn Python on a YouTube channel. You don't really have to spend a lot of money just to get the basic, uh, you know, the basic, the functions which I used. How does the Python work? Just to get comfortable so that you can at least in the interview, you can talk about it. Third is, uh, you can see here, then you're mostly talking about, again, the attitude of a client, right? So I'll not get into the attitude and suppose since you're watching this video, that it automatically means the attitude is good. And let's talk about the interview process. So uh, as opposed to how interviews used to be get conducted, uh, you know, uh, probably 10 years back where the requirements used to be smaller. Now the interview processes are pretty straightforward. And most of the companies will start with an aptitude test. Now it depends whether the aptitude test will be absolutely an aptitude test or it might also have some bits and bits and pieces of finance knowledge also right but in the mdp process it's entirely aptitude for the first round right then once you get shortlisted then the interview process this is the face to face round that happens then you have got the mdp training program that starts right so there's a literacy program that they run and then you get assigned on the various roles which you, they feel that you might perform better right now, the aptitude structure mostly is logical reasoning and communication. Okay, and we'll do a, some, some sample questions to get an idea of what kind of questions can be expected right? and what kind of preparation. Now, it's not the kind of logical reasoning question that actually turn up in the CAT exam or your CET papers. Right? It's a little different, but in fact, it's actually a lot easier. But you need to at least do have some preparation so that don't go blind on this. Right? So let's start with the first question. Okay, now this is the kind of logical reasoning questions that are expected, right? So it doesn't really have any question, right? So it's it's also called as deductive logical reasoning question, right? Now you can see here that there are some symbols out here which are mentioned. So there's a triangle, circle, there's a plus sign, and then there's a star, right? So if I mention that this is one, this is two, this is three, and this is four. Right. What will which order of these codes will make this into this order? So if you can see here, the first is obviously the same, right? So the triangle remains the triangle, right? The circle remains the circle, but instead of the plus sign, the star is coming up first. So it's pretty. It's pretty obvious that one. It's happening one and two, and then it is four and three. So the code should be one, two, and four and three, right? So if you want to check this answer. You can quickly check that that is the right answer, right? Let's take a little more complicated one, right? So we can see that if we try to name this, number this as 1, 2, 3, 4, then we obviously have a code of 2, 1, 4, 3, which is executed, right? That means if the two code is executed, then it, now the new structure is that you've got a triangle, then you've got a plus sign, right? Then you've got the circle. And then you have the star sign, right? So now basis this code, right? 2, 1, 4, 3. If which of these codes will cause this to happen? Right? So you can see here that it's basically if I were to say here 1, 2, 3, and 4, right? So now which of these codes will make this into a circle? So it's pretty obvious that if you want a, uh, if you want uh, a, you know, a zero to come here. Or a circle to come here, you will use three. Then you've got two, right? And then you want a star, which is four, and you got a one. So this right answer is going to be three, two, four, one. So the same logic, but it's a deduct deductive logical reasoning basis, two stages of coding, right? So this this is again one of the questions which you can expect. Uh, let's try another one. This is a simpler one. It's it's obviously a very straightforward one. The reason I put this third question is so that you can pause the video and try to solve this once so that you get that practice which is required, right? But once you pause it, I'll still do the solution. So this is one, this is two, this is three, and this is four. And now you can see here that it's the triangle first. So it's going to be four, right? Then it's the circle. This is one. Then star is two and plus is three. So the answer is four, one, two, three. Now, remember that these questions in the real interview is going to be timed. So you need a little bit of practice so that you can, you don't get confused as to what is expected. Majorly, the reason why students actually fail these kind of interviews 
is because they don't have the time to practice. And when such weird kind of questions comes, then they uh, you know get panicked and then they screw up the test. Now, uh, a pretty easy question, but I'm giving a logic to these kind. Of, this is also called as a digit challenge, in which you need to put the answer is already there, but you need to put the digits so that you can get the right answer. Right now, first and foremost, the basic logic. Okay, that to be remembered is whenever a final ex- result is given, what you want to do is you want to get the addition part to be the higher number. Okay, so for example, if you want fifteen to be there, then obviously this part has to be a higher number, right? So it's pretty simple. You can also start with let's say nine plus eight. So let's say we do nine plus eight, that gives us seventeen. So this will also do, right? And you can also do. Uh, nine plus nine that can also work, right? Uh, you can also do eight plus nine. So there are various permutations and combinations available, right? So now, if either of these answers can be right, right? I mean, there's no such thing as a wrong answer in this. But just remember the logic that your answers has to be your addition has to be higher. So in this case, we will do seventeen minus two, which will give us fifteen. If this is eighteen, then this is eighteen minus three. Which will give us fifteen. It's a basic algebraic mathematics, right? Let's take another one. Now, this is can be a little difficult right? because now you, but the logic is still same that your addition, right, out here or the multiplication has to be a higher number than fifty-five. So you can do, let's say, nine eight into eight. That will give you seventy-two, right? Now you from seventy-two, you have got two places to deduct, right? And you want fifty-five. So let's say we take the highest number available, which is nine, right? Now another thing to remember is that it might the question sometimes might also enforce that you cannot use the same number again, right? But let's say this condition is not there for the moment. So then you do minus nine, so you got uh, three and sixty-three, right? Now from sixty-three you want fifty-five, so it's pretty simple, right? So sixty-three minus fifty, you want fifty-five. So what is the difference? That's about eight. So then you can do seventy-two minus nine minus eight. But let's say there was a condition stating that you cannot use nine and eight same number again. So instead of doing nine, what we can do is we can do seven. Okay. So maybe seven mine into nine will give you sixty-three. From sixty-three, you want to go to fifty-five, right? So sixty-three and fifty-five. So that gives us eight. Now. Uh, since you want to do sixty-three and you cannot use seven and nine, right? So you can either do minus six, minus two, and you can get a fifty-five number, right? So just be careful on what you multiply first, because you cannot use the same number again, and that most likely will be the condition, right? Now this is a verbal case, right? Now it's pretty simple, but again, you need to be able to comprehend this in a limited time frame, right? Now, the important thing to note in such verbal case is instead of reading the case, my suggestion is always look at the question first. Right? I used to give the same advice even for the CFA level three essay based questions. So you can see here the company started the business selling different products made of leather, which they source out. So there is something about sourcing leather and making different products. Okay. So let's now. Now, when you're reading it, it makes sense and get the answer faster, right? So uh, after the business grew, the family decided to make their own uh, leather goods, right? So first is the business started selling with with selling of imported leather goods to wealthy clients. Right? So in my line, the product line started with handbags, okay, followed by. Footwear, accessories, women's wear, and men's wear. Now, since uh, Pushia began the company, began the company uh, has grown into operating over three hundred stores globally, and employs about twelve thousand employees. Its headquarters is in Milan, Italy. Now, the company started the business selling different products made of leather, which they sourced outside of Italy. Now, the question is: it's a very s- simple question. It's starting. Started their business selling. So let's the, the 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 keyword to understand here is started. Okay, so the business started with selling of imported leather goods to wealthy clients, but after the business grew, 
the family decided to make their own leather goods. Their products line started. So here, made of leather goods which were sourced outside. And the key word here is different. Okay, different products. So you can see here, yes, the product line started with handbags followed by footwear. So it started with handbags followed by footwear accessories, women's wear and men's wear. Whereas the business started with selling of imported leather goods to wealthy clients. Now the question is, is this statement correct? Right? So the company started the business selling different products made of leather, which they sourced outside of Italy, which is most likely true. Right? Because yes, they did start their business selling of products made of leather, which is pretty clear. Right? Imported leather goods to wealthy clients. And when we look at uh, the product lines, you can see some variety out there, right? Let's look at the last question here. So again, look at the question first, okay? Pushya's values include leave known paths, to leave known paths and try to new ways of doing things, okay? So be like our designs. We are bold in all aspects of what we do. We dare to think differently and embody. Uh, embolden everybody to do so themselves. Be brave, issue courage, believe in taking risks. So they are taking risks, which is a feature of new way of doing things. Rontalensely challenging the status quo. So status quo is means doing the same thing in the same manner again and again. Be trustworthy. So uh, the values include to leave known paths and try to new, which is kind of true because they believe in taking risks. Dauntlessly challenging the status quo and sustaining a values right and the similar they can also you can also support this by saying that we dare to think differently and embolden everybody to do so themselves so now you might ask why these kind of questions are asked and the, the reason why they're asking is because when you're doing research and if you're collecting uh, data or making sense of the data uh, you know sometimes the, the answers of the things you're researching is not directly available so you have to uh, take the implied version of what is written. So that is the reason why they want to check whether you have the capability to look at some data or information and then use that information for some insights which you can create, which is what is given on the right hand side of the screen. Right Now let's finally look at some deal breakers. Right? <laughs> now the first is obviously not clearing the aptitude, on, which is a deal breaker. So you need to have aptitude. And even if you are intelligent, I would still... Uh, recommend you to still practice these questions because you know you might be intelligent but you might not have done such questions so it doesn't uh, you know your intelligence will not be of much use if you don't do that please remember the biggest uh, you know deal breaker even after the app round is actually not being available to join on a specific joining term so then they give you about three dates to join okay you have to be absolutely compliant because since they are higher on bulk, they have a certain process of training, induction, etc. 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 For that, it is very important that the candidate is available to join on a specific date. I've seen so many candidates just being rejected because they will say that I need a uh, I have an exam, I can only join after this. They will not really tell you, uh, you know, uh, you know, they will try to do a trick question, right? They will say that uh, you know, do you need any leaves in the coming three months? And you might just say, yes, I need because I have this and that. So be sure not to say that because that will just be a direct rejection. And uh, that also means the related question to that is leaves in the, don't ask for leaves in the first three months. It's pretty clear that they don't want uh, their MDP uh, employees leaving in the first three months because the first three months is where the maximum amount of training is going to happen. And post that, you're going to get assigned. So that was a short video, actually not a short video, it's a very detailed video on the Morningstar MDP uh, research interview practice. I hope this video helps and uh, please like, uh, like and subscribe and share our videos and uh, press the bell icon so that you are updated also about the next coming interview preparation video that I will be making. So I'll see you again.